Should you be buying an older MacBook if you find an awesome deal on it? Or should you really be waiting for the next generation to ship and buy that? Let's talk about it. Anxiety, filling up every space, no privacy. Welcome back to the channel. So I get asked this question all the time on my channel, so I wanted to address it. I get asked the question, someone says to me in the comments, I found this awesome deal on this, you know, 14 inch MacBook Pro, an M1 or an M2 version, should I buy it? And I look around and I say, this is such a hard question to answer, right? And then they come back and they say, well, wait a second, should I buy this or should I really be not, not even buying the M3, but should I be waiting for the M4 or the next model coming out later? And these are the questions I get all the time. So I wanted to address this in this video and tell you why it's so hard for me to answer this question. Now, before we get into some real world examples here, I just wanna tell you who I am. And if you haven't watched my channel, I'm somebody that loves to find the deals, trust me. If you watch my channel, I have deals all the time. I'm showing people the M1, the M2, the M3, all the deals you can get on all these MacBooks. But even myself know, is the real world cost of owning an older MacBook worth it to you for the cost savings and money? And that's what we're gonna talk about today. All right, let's just start with a real world example so I can kind of show you what I mean here. So take a look here. This is on Best Buy right now, and this is gonna be the 14 inch M1 MacBook Pro base model right here, 969. So refurbished though, it's gonna be good because it's certified refurbished from the Geek Squad, but still 969 bucks. You look here, it looks like it's a thousand bucks off for over 50% off, was 1999. And this is the typical one that someone's gonna say, hey, should I buy this? You're gonna send me the link and say, is this a good enough deal for me to buy? All right, so the reason I can't always answer this for everybody is because of this. Now, what would I typically do on a breakdown? The next thing I would do is I would say, well, wait a second, how much is a new one? So I go over here, this is Amazon, and I look here, this is the M3 14-inch MacBook Pro, $1699. So we're still talking a massive difference. This is about 1700 bucks versus 969. We're talking about, you know, $730 difference. It's a pretty big difference. You do get two, two more gigs of RAM here at 18. You get the M3 chip versus the M1, 15% off here. But obviously that, that $1,000, this is, these things really aren't 1999. You can get them for 1699. So that giant cost of over $1,000 savings, it shrunk a little bit. See that, it shrunk just a little bit. And we're gonna keep seeing this shrink. I'm gonna keep going through examples and we'll show you why this, this keeps shrinking. There's the first example. But of course, I'm gonna say myself, well, what about the M2? I mean, if obviously if the M3 is a lot more, can we get an M2 pretty good? So we go over here, here's one on Amazon. And again, this is refurbished, but this is, you know, you can find maybe a better, cheaper model out there, but this is one I found, 14, 1422. So obviously this versus the new one, I would get the new one, obviously. That's, you know, like, what is it, a 200 and something dollar difference? I'd probably just get the new one. But this, you know, besides the M1, the M1's only 969. This is 14, four, you know, 1422. So we're still talking like 450, $460 difference there. And that's what we have to kind of consider. So obviously we see that, you know, the price is shrinking and stuff, but I would still, you know, there's an outlier here, and the outlier is the M1. So on paper, it looks like a good deal to me, you know, and, but I'm reluctant to say, go ahead and buy it, right? I would say, well, let's just keep looking here, and I'm gonna get into, you know, at the end of the video, why, you know, you'll be surprised to my answer. Let's just put it that way. You're gonna be very surprised in how I answer this, but let's just kind of take a step back and put this on the back burner for now, this example, and let's just show you another example. All right, there's other cases where you're not gonna be getting into such a wide gap on the pricing. So take a look here. So this is on Amazon. This is gonna be an Apple 2000, this is an M2 MacBook Air base model, 13 inch base model, 7.99. So someone says to me, is that a great deal? Should I pick this up? You know, the M3 is out, there's an M1. Again, we go through the same thing here, but this is gonna be a lot tighter. So 800 bucks or lower, that sounds, it's a very attractive price for a MacBook of any type, even if it's new like this, it's, it's awesome, right? But, so we go there and I say, well, what, let's just take a look. So what is the, what is the new one cost? And we look over here. Geez, it's not, it's not $1,099, it's actually $849, so 23% off right now. So that's a $50 difference. So right off the bat, I'm like, well, no, just don't get the M2, get the M3 right now. It's a $50 difference. You know, obviously, it's just worth the extra updates. It's worth a lot more, so obviously, this is really close. But then, you know, obviously, we're going to say, well, what about the M1? What's the M1 go for? And I go over here and I see the M1 is $649. So... In this case, and again, I'm gonna stay tuned because I'm gonna get, this is gonna make a little bit more sense in a second. But this is gonna, again, it's hard for me, but this is a little bit easier for me to answer than the MacBook Pros. Because on the MacBook Airs, I'll say to something, I'll say to somebody like, what are you gonna be using it for? Is it, if it's someone like my mom, let's just say you're buying it for your parents or something. Is it gonna be used for email, browsing the web, and just basic, you know, uh, YouTube watching and stuff like that? I can tell you, you know, the M1, the M2, and the M3 base models are gonna be exactly almost the same. Nobody will tell the difference between those. The M1 even had faster hard drives than the M2 at the base model. There's almost no difference there if you're using it for very, very, very basic stuff. 
And uh, but if you're somebody also like I might say, well, can you afford more than 650? If you need the extra 200 bucks to 850 to pay rent or for food or something for your kids, you go with the the M1, right? Go with the M1, save the money, and you'll be okay. But you know that's kind of what I'm saying on paper, you know. But there's so much more opportunity cost here that you got to consider, and that's what we're going to be going through. So again, in this case, you're going to save 200 bucks on a very inexpensive system, which is a big part of the system, like 25, 30 percent of the system. But that cost starts out here, but it's going to keep doing this, and we're going to talk about that. And then ultimately, I'm going to tell you what my answer is. All right, like I said, on the MacBook Airs, it's fairly easy for me to answer that because there's not much of a gap, and it, you know we're usually talking about very basic stuff there. If you're considering that system, they're all going to perform very similar. But when you're somebody that wants to, you know, a MacBook Pro, especially ones that can go up to $2,000, $3,000, $4,000, and you ask me these questions, it's very difficult for me to answer because I have no idea what you're doing, right? So for instance, let's say, for, first of all, if you want a MacBook Pro, you're a person that knows you need a MacBook Pro, you're almost never going to go ahead and say, I'm just going to buy the MacBook Pro for $2,000 when I can buy a you know, MacBook Air for $900. I'm not that, you know, most people aren't that stupid. There's got to be a reason why you need it. So that's number one. So you break it down. Let's just say you're doing video editing or you're doing code compiling or you're doing image, you know, editing and stabilization on videos and all this other stuff. If you're somebody like me, for example, I'm going to break it down. I'm going to say, well, listen, I do about 100 to 120 videos a year. That's a lot of videos. If I can only, you know, save just a little bit of time, this is going to make a big difference, you know, in my decision process. So the M3 chip is about 40% faster than the M1 or maybe even a little bit more. And, and you know, a lot of tasks, that's going to make no difference at all. If you're doing, again, basic stuff or if you're doing stuff that doesn't really require all that horsepower, it's not really eating most of your CPU, the M1 and the M3 is no different. Really, on paper, um, it is, but I mean, in real life, it's not going to make big of a difference to you, and the cost savings might be worth it. But for somebody like me that uses, you know, does all these videos, and I know I'm going to save even 10 minutes of video, you know, over 120, we're talking, you know, what is that? A lot of minutes, let's put it that way. I think I calculated out to like 15 to 16 hours of time or something a year, and that's just one task I'm saving it on. And that time, if my time's worth 30 or 40 bucks an hour, I mean, I've just, the cost, the difference was here, right? And I was just showing you that before. But now it's gone like this, and now it's really, really close here, and that cost isn't even done yet. And we'll talk about some other things that are going to kind of creep in here. But right off the bat, just that little bit of time is already costing me all that money. So for someone like me, I would say go with the M3. But for somebody that does completely different things and they don't do any video editing and stuff that requires high CPU usage, you'd probably want to go with the M1 in that case and save the 750 bucks. I mean, 750 bucks, you can go ahead and buy like an iPad Air on top of it, buy the M1, you know, and then have both for the even less cost and just buying the M3. And that's where it comes in, right? But for me, it wouldn't be worth it. But for a lot of people out there, it would totally be worth it as long as their tasks and what they're doing makes sense. But then we got to ask, what about software updates and, and OS security updates moving forward? Now, I just showed you the cost kept shrinking, right? It keeps shrinking. It's going to shrink a little bit more now. So if you buy the M1, you might only have like three or four more years of security updates left. If you buy the M3, you might have five or six years left. Now, for someone like me, again, this is a little bit different because for me now, I actually get rid of my computers. Like I have one sitting right here. This is the Air. Um, I, got, I bought an M2 Air right here earlier this year because I only keep these for a couple years. So I know that the security updates are going to run out before I sell it or before I get rid of it. For other people that hang on to these things for like eight years, you're definitely going to want to go with the newer version or at least consider that because if the security updates go away really quickly for you, it could be a problem. But for the person only keeping the M1 for maybe three or four more years and then getting rid of it, you don't even have to think about that because it's not your problem at that point and it's just going to be fine. So that's another equation and why that thing just keeps shrinking. And then the big elephant in the room, too, is going to be resale, right? So if you, if you imagine if you buy an M1 14-inch you know, Pro right now, and you buy that for nine something, and you buy, you know, instead of the $1,600 one or $1,800 one, there's a big gap there. But when you sell it, you got to assume that they're going to be selling for at least, you know, 40 or, you know, 30 to 50% difference between the M1 and the M3 in a couple of years. So all that money is going to come back to you. But again, it matters if you're going to sell it. If you're going to keep it forever, that doesn't matter. But if you're somebody that can, you know, is going to keep it for three years and sell it, that could be a substantial amount of money, that 30 to 50%. It could be another two or 300 bucks. And then this thing just keeps shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And all of a sudden, it's actually cheaper to buy the one that was $16.99 than the one that was $9.23 when you think about all the factors. But it's not, it's not about everyone. I can't, you know, it's not a blanket, sta blanket statement, sorry. It's all about who you are. And I don't know who you are. I have absolutely no idea how you use it, how long you're going to keep it, 
you know, if you're going to resell it, if you're not going to resell it, what you do on it, is it video editing or is it just searching for emails? Or maybe it's something that you need a lot of power, but not a lot of disk or a lot of disks, you know, you know, as far as speed, but not a lot of CPU. These are all different things that really is what the consideration comes down to. So at the end of the day, it's impossible for me to tell you it's a good deal because it's only going to be a good deal if it, you know, if the cost of it is, is you know, less to you than it would be if you just bought the other one. And I have no idea. So I don't want people to think I'm rude by saying sometimes I have no idea, you know, it looks like a good deal because people sometimes listen to me and then they buy something and they're like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I made the right choice. Well, I don't know either. So that's the bottom line. And then, but the next one, actually, the, the question after this is a lot of people ask me, hey, you know, should I buy, just wait for the next model, right? I mean, we're really getting close to the next model. Should I buy it? This one's actually a lot easier for me to answer because I always say, do you need it for work or school right now? Do you need a computer right now? If they say yes, I say, well, then buy the M3 right now, buy the newest, you know, buy the best in the best cost, but buy the best model you can get right now. And don't worry about the future ones. Apple and all companies, they want to market to you. They want you always worrying about the next one coming out. Are you up with the Joneses? Do you need that next version? To be honest, there's not going to be that much of a difference. I mean, a couple things here and there, yes, but if you need a computer now, definitely buy it now and don't worry about it. Get on a cycle every two to three, four or five years or whatever it is and just buy on that cycle and then it gets out of your head that you're missing something. I hate to tell you, you're going to be missing something every single year because they come out with a new version every year. You're never going to buy at the right time. You're always going to think, hey, I made a mistake, but don't. Buy it right now if you need it. Now, if you can wait and you have no, absolutely no reason, like you have an M2, you have a computer here, don't buy it. Wait for the next one, see what it's like, and then actually wait for the sales because when you buy it in the first couple of days, there's no sales. Wait a couple of months, buy it for a sale, save a couple hundred bucks. And that's kind of my advice to you. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap this up. That's kind of my rant there. I apologize about it, but I get asked this all the time and I just wanna to explain to people why it's impossible for me to give you a good answer. I'll show you all these deals in all my videos. Check out my channel. I have deals coming in all the time. But don't always take my advice. You got to go out and do your own research for who you are because I'm totally different than you. I have a channel. Me buying an older system, I can actually make a video on it. You can't. You got to use it. So we're two completely different people and we have two completely different kind of choices as far as which way we're going to go. And uh, I just wanted to kind of lay that out that, I mean, just my recommendations on stuff like that doesn't mean it's right for you. So we'll talk to you guys in the next one. And I hope you guys like these kind of weird rant content videos because I just look for new content to make and I enjoy doing it. So we'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.